Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 19th of January. As always, I have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. New videos this week, as promised, I dived into the Microsoft Entra Private Access, their Zero Trust Network Access solution. So I go through its capabilities, but also spend a lot of time about some of its very powerful new DNS capabilities and hooking into your private DNS, which opens up a lot of really exciting opportunities. Now I did have plans for a second video this week, but we decided to have Whataburger for dinner Monday night, and then it woke me up at midnight, kept me awake all night, kept me shivering on the couch all day, and then with a fever, all I could really get out was to my children, asking them to avenge me, um, but they didn't. So yeah, not eating that again. Their response was, this is why we prefer McDonald's. So hence the burger theme um, for this video, but hey, more videos uh, back to normal soon. And interestingly enough, when I did my AI 900 generative AI video last month, I used the example of a burger trying to eat John. So that was some kind of premonition that a burger was in fact going to try and kill me. Anyway, on with what's new. On the compute side, so now in private preview, so I have to go and sign up for this capability, but the ability to upgrade from the Gen 1, i.e. BIOS based, to the Gen 2, which is the modern UEFI, but adds things like the virtual TPM, but now with trusted launch. So that also adds the secure boot capabilities, leveraging the virtual TPM, give us that attestation from the hardware all the way through to the OS to help protect from those root kits and boot kits. Well now, that's available if I go and sign up for that preview. On the networking side, so virtual network encryption has gone GA. So now I can enable encryption of traffic on my virtual network between my virtual machines, my virtual machine scale sets. That can be on the same virtual network, and that can also be between regionally and globally peered virtual networks. So it's the private IP to the private IP, and that encryption is all done with a Microsoft managed key using 2048-bit uh, encryption. Now the way this is working is it's using the FPGA in the Azure host. So I have to use a VM SKU that is supported that has accelerated networking enabled because it's that accelerated networking that says, hey, expose a virtual function from that FPGA into the virtual machine. And then that encryption is offloaded and decryption is offloaded to the FPGA. So it doesn't have any performance impact on the actual host onto the virtual machine. And so the encryption is terminated at those FPGAs in the hosts. Now, if the VM I'm talking to doesn't support encryption, then obviously the traffic will not be encrypted between them. And if I'm talking to a PaaS service that is integrated with the virtual network, then it's gonna depend on the PaaS service, it's gonna depend on is the PaaS service based on virtual machines that have accelerated networking enabled, and I would just have to go and check the virtual network flow logs, which will now confirm, hey, is that flow encryption actually happening? but I can go and enable this on existing uh, virtual networks. Because it's just gone GA, it's sort of being enabled in regions as we speak. So you wanna go and check the docs for the specifics. I want to quickly talk about this peering point outage that happened. There's been obviously a lot of bad weather everywhere, but there was an outage at the Equinix facility in Chicago and I actually thought it was a kind of interesting learning point because I know a number of customers were impacted. So I just wanted to, because there's not many updates this week, talk about it really, really quickly. And so the point is, if we think of an Azure region, so let's just say this is a specific region. When you design your services, you think about resilience and you'll have maybe multiple instances of your various resource, whatever that is. And what you'd like to do is you'd like to think about resilience from any kind of data center level failure. So ideally I want these in different data centers. And the way we do that is we use availability zones. So hey, AZ1, AZ2, AZ3. 
So now I've got resilience from data center level failures, they have independent power, calling, networking, etc. So great, I've got that nice resilience. And then I have a virtual network that spans availability zones. And then I think about, hey, I want to connect. So you create a zone redundant uh, gateway. All great, all nice and resilient. Now what happens now is that region has these regional network gateways. And remember, Microsoft operates this massive global WAN. So it's this huge global network that connects into there. And then what happens is that global network extends to many, many points around the world. And the point of these extensions of the network is you can now have these carrier neutral facilities. You might hear them called meet me's, peering points, whatever. But these are some facility around the world, lots of them, where we extend the Microsoft network. And you as the customer, hey, you have your locations, you have your network, and you go and extend it into one of those locations as well. Now, when I go and create an express route circuit, you actually get two connections as part of that circuit for high availability. So at this meet me, this carrier neutral, not a Microsoft facility, in this case it was Equinix, Microsoft has cages, you might have a cage or depending on who you go through, you get two separate routers for the two connections you get. On your side, you get your two routers and then you get the cross connect. You get those connections made and this is what you think of as that express route private peering. So I create my express route circuit. And now I have that connection connecting into here. But realize this is a single physical facility. Those two connections are there to give me, hey, if there's maintenance required, because they're active active, I draw two of them. So if the Microsoft Enterprise Edge router had to have maintenance performed. Hey, it can go down, this one's still running. If there was a failure of the router, great, it's still going. But it's a building. So I've built this highly resilient architecture in here, so I don't have a single point of failure at a data center level. And then my connection to my on-premises is through a single building. So you, you don't want that. If it's an important architecture and I want resilience, the recommendation for disaster recovery would be, hey, I would have a second circuit at a meet me hundreds of miles away. So you'd think, hey, your network, you'd also expand into this one, for example, and I would have a second circuit, I'll do this color, that my gateway can still connect, but now I'll have a connection over to here as well. And I can do things like waiting and path prepending. So this would be the preferred option. This would be, hey, if this was unavailable, it would switch over and start using this. Now, I might get some additional latency because it's hundreds of miles away, but it's still a much, much better option than not having connectivity. Now, another option you could do for that backup connection is you might also say, well, hey, look, um, there's the internet that you're also connected to. So another option is, hey, you could put in place, for example, a site-to-site -site VPN as the backup. So you have a different gateway, but now you could also get a connection as a backup that way. So you have choices, and in large organizations, hey, I might have data centers here, and remember, I want resiliency from an Azure region failure. So I've probably got a deployment in a second region anyway. So I'd want a local circuit and create like a bow tie. My express route deep dive video goes into those. All I wanted to stress is if I'm using express route and I'm using private peering to connect services between Azure region and my network, don't build this fantastic resilience against the data center level failure and then go through one data center, connect them together. That's a single point of failure. Make sure you have some resilience in that 
connection, either a second circuit at a different meet me. I want a distance, a natural disaster could take out different meet me's in the same metro. So hundreds of miles away, or I could do a site site VPN over the internet, just have something. Again, that was a huge digression what I'm normally doing the Azure update, but it, it's super, super important. So I, I thought it was worth calling out here because there's not many updates this week. So anyway, take note. And then on the database side, Cosmos DB now has, when I'm using shared throughput models, I can do a partition merge. So if I have um, partitions that I fragmented throughput, maybe it's uh, less than 3,000 request units per partition, less than 20 gigabytes of storage per partition, I can clear out and remove those unused empty partitions and get rid of that fragmentation. I can merge them in together and get better utilization. That's in preview. And then Azure MySQL Flexible now has the import from MySQL Single that is GA. So remember, single is that old model, both MySQL and Postgres initially was that single server model, which was based on a proprietary container type technology. Flexible is more VM based, I get better high availability, more customization, better availability zone use, a whole set of improvements on that. So now it makes it really easy to just move from single to flexible. And you can do it with a single command. The only reason I'm smiling a little bit is, let's see if we can actually look at this quick. If you look at the single command, it's fantastic how, how big this single command is. But it is a single command, and it does support the schema, the data, the login import. I can get the compatible firewall rules from the single into my flexible. There is also a near zero downtime migration, where there's kind of an offline import and then replication. But for that near zero, the documentation talks about it, um, there is an additional step. You have to then run this additional command as well. But hey, uh, I can totally do that. And that was it. So a super fast update this week. Um, but some nice features. I think that encryption for the virtual network is huge and a lot of customers have been asking for that. I think having the awareness about that express route is really important. Um, because again, I'm building resilient architectures. In anything you ever do, don't introduce single points of failure, maybe in a specific zone or a regional resource or another region. Always think through that complete end to end. And do I have the level of resiliency I want? Anyway, until next video, take care.